But Oregon, now with Mario Cristobal going to Miami, Oregon is open. And so if we look at this, their last five head coaches, you know, Chip Kelly, who took over for Bilotti, who was there for four years, he leaves and goes to the NFL. Then you get Mark Helfrich, who's there for four years, who, who gets fired, but he did, he took Chip's recruits, took Chip's players, took them to a national championship in 2014 against Ohio State. You know, Marcus Mariota, I mean, Heisman, I mean, we're doing, doing great things. Eventually, that thing falls off, gets fired. Then, you know, they, they try to solve this thing with the silver bullet, bringing Willie Taggart, guy from the East Coast, you know, Florida dude, bring him in. He's there for one year. And you bring in another Florida guy, Mario Cristobal. He's there for five seasons, has some good success, but now he's gone. And so if you look at that, that's really in the last, what, 15 years, they're going to be sitting here looking now for another coach, for their fifth coach. And this is a place in Oregon that really has limitless resources. Eugene's a great college town. They've made an effort, starting back with Bilotti, that they want to try to get in, get in the game, and they want to make sure that they have all the cool bells and whistles, the best facilities, the best, uh, best uniforms, recruiting, the food, everything. If you go through that place, it looks like a Taj Mahal. It's absolutely phenomenal. And so they want to make sure they have all that, all the bells and whistles, because what they don't have you know, is the history of a USC or maybe even a Washington. Like they don't necessarily have that long story tradition or even a UCLA or someone like that, especially not like the schools out on the East Coast or the Eastern half of the United States, the Ohio States, the Bamas, the Georgias, you know, the Michigans, you know, Texas. Like they need to make sure LSU, all these different schools, they have to compete with what kids love today, the gear in Nike. And so Oregon wants to win. There are a lot of schools and programs that will say, hey, we value athletics. We really value football. Because if you value athletics, you have to value football because football is the revenue driver. It's what drives the entirety of the bus for all of your athletic program because of the money that it generates. So there's people that will say, hey, we value football. And then that's what they say. But then their commitment level to it is different. Their intentions and their commitment vastly different. And so they say this, but they're worlds apart. Oregon, I believe, wants to be really good. They're going to invest. They're going to pay guys. It's a little bit unique. If you're a, if someone who's you know, not from the West Coast, I don't know if you necessarily want to live out there. If you want to recruit out there, it's a little bit different. But there's a lot of talent in California. And Oregon has been doing a great job. And you have Nike at your becking call all the time. And so there's a lot of great things about the Oregon job. It's a little bit of the new royalty in college football, I would say. You know, like I said, they don't have that story tradition, but kids today, I mean, you got all the shoes, you get all the gear, you got everything you want. When people go around and look at facilities, you look at Oregon, they got water walls and all kinds of this crazy stuff and you know, all the recovery tanks and everything that you need, they have it. All the bells and whistles. They've got a beautiful facility out there. And they're going to continue to have all those things. By the way, now with the NIL stuff, if you want to go there, I'm sure they'll be able to get guys some Nike stuff and get that rolling in there. So they've got the resources, but they've got to get this coaching hire right. And I think they're going to want to stay out on the West Coast so they don't have one of these guys jettisoning like Willie Taggart did or like Mario Cristobal and leaving and going back East. Brian Kelly, a little different. He went to the NFL, and that's something that I think college programs you can handle. You can handle when your coach goes to the NFL, but it's tough when you're Notre Dame and your coach goes to LSU or when you're Oklahoma and your coach goes to USC. If they leave and go to the NFL, it's a whole nother deal. But Oregon pride hurting a little bit right now. So I'm, I have a tendency to think they're going to want to stay with someone with West Coast roots. Head coach at Baylor, Dave Aranda. You know, he was at Hawaii. He's a California guy. I don't think he leaves Baylor, but he's someone that provides a little bit of intrigue. I do think right there that there's an element that he's a West Coast guy. They could throw a mountain of cash at him. He'd have limitless resources. He's not somebody that likes to be out in the forefront in the spotlight. Um, and I don't know if you would have to be that at Oregon or not. That's that's one thing that you, I don't really know. I'm not super familiar with it, but he seems like a guy who's a little more quiet and reserved. So you got Dave Aranda. People have thrown out Matt Campbell. He's a Midwest dude. He's an Ohio guy. I, I don't think they go that way. Maybe they ultimately do. But I don't see him wanting to you know, go and live out in Eugene, even if they back up the brinks for him. It's just that that doesn't seem like it would be a, a good fit for me right there. Uh, here's where it starts to get interesting now. We've got Justin Wilcox. He's the head coach at Cal. And he's a Duck alum. 
played played at Oregon. So you know that he's got the ties and understands what it is like. And he was there before it was what Oregon is now, where they're you know pretty good team and they've got all the resources in the world. Problem is last year is five and seven at Cal. His his record overall there is 26 and 28. It's not a great record. And then in 2019, that was their best year. They go eight and five, but he does have those ties. And I think his schools right now are seeing guys leaving and going places and just jumping after the money. There's a little something I think in the loyalty aspect where if you can get an alumnus, if you can have someone who was from there, some of your esteemed alumni, bring them back. It's going to mean more to them than it would other people. And so that that's why the Justin Wilcox thing is intriguing. Plus he's a cow. And I sat here, I, Hosted a show on XM with Rick Neuheisel this week. You know, and Rick's a uh, West Coast dude. He was at Colorado. He was at Washington, UCLA. And Rick said, here's the problem with the Cal State schools, the Cal Berkeleys, you know, the UCLAs is they don't, they don't allocate the dollars to it. They don't allocate the dollars. And so while, you know, Cal, that's the home of Aaron Rodgers, maybe the best quarterback in the NFL right now and one of the best of the last generation – they don't allocate the dollars to be able to have success. So Justin Wilcox, if he went to Oregon, that would no longer be an issue. The dollars would no longer be an issue. So he would get that box and that thing could be checked off. Now, the, one of the last things, one of the guys who I find really intriguing, who was at Oregon, who was the first guy on this list, who's at UCLA, who did a pretty good job this year, had a chance to even beat Oregon. They had their backup quarterback in, just couldn't convert uh, fourth down. But Chip Kelly, you know, and Chip Kelly is at UCLA. And they've done a good job upgrading some of the stuff. But I was talking with Rick, who is a UCLA alum, who coached at UCLA. They were trying to put together a deal to be able to play at SoFi Arena, which is our stadium, which is closer than going all the way out to Pasadena to the Rose Bowl. And Pasadena is beautiful. But there's a problem on the West Coast of getting people to games. It's hard to recruit if you have empty stadiums. And so they were working on that. Then they re-signed this long-term deal out in Pasadena with the Rose Bowl. So they're going to be staying out there. And so if you're Chip Kelly, you're wondering, can I really win here? Is this going to be something like I could win and have the resources like I had in Oregon? I think he's a good fit. I like him at UCLA. I think it makes them relevant. I think it's good for college football. But if I'm Chip Kelly, I'm trying to get back to Oregon. Now, hopefully you didn't burn every bridge on the way out. You left him Helfrich. He got him to a national championship. Maybe if Chip was there, they found a way, maybe find a way to win one. But he did a great job when he was up there at Oregon. So there should still be some positive feelings. I think Chip Kelly's done a pretty good job of turning around that UCLA program, getting them in a good spot. They don't want to spend the money, just like Cal doesn't want to spend the money. Not an issue at Oregon. They will spend the dollars. And so if you're a coach, what are your intentions? And what are your actions? All right? Your commitment level. You can intend and talk about this, but over here, you actually have to buck up and spend the money. And I don't think that they're doing that really at a lot of the California schools. It wouldn't surprise me if Chip Kelly goes. My two favorites in the clubhouse, Justin Wilcox, Chip Kelly, to take that job. 